Hey, yo, all right, man, look, it's no accident that in 15 out of the 29 shots in the Breath of the Wild sequel announcement trailer, Nintendo featured some pale glowing green stuff. This spiraling script, the luminous stones, and this hand that's holding Ganon. That's over half the shots. So the sequel's going a certain direction, and we're on the street in the Zelda community is that it's going to get very dark. Darker than Majora's Mask, darker than Twilight Princess, and I'm down with that. But I'm also calling that it's going in a very spiritual, organic direction. Back to their roots, you might say. With dirty old dungeons, use of magic and spells, and all that good stuff. Here's why. First of all, the Zelda series is no stranger to the metaphysical, of course. And although the Breath of the Wild is cited for breaking a lot of traditions, you do go around communicating with the ghosts of your friends who were killed in action a hundred years previous, collecting spirit orbs from mummified monks, and encountering strange realms where you take on challenges of self-improvement like the Trial of the Sword and the Champion's Ballad with the Blight Ganon rematches and Eventide Island, none of which are fully physical encounters, so there is that. However, the Sheikah Slate and the runes being acquired during the tutorial phase of Breath of the Wild is one of the biggest criticisms, and it's fair, I get it. But at the time of the making of this video, the last time we've seen the Sheikah Slate, towers, shrines, or any Sheikah technology whatsoever for that matter, was at the end of Breath of the Wild when Varuda was malfunctioning and Link and Zelda set off to investigate what's up. And people on the internet are all like, hey, well why only Varuda was having problems? And my favorite new theory on all this is that all the Sheikah tech had a Hyrulean wide power outage due to the time traveling events of Age of Calamity. Basically, all the Sheikah servers started crashing when Terrico brought Sidon back in time to save Mipha. In the Age of Calamity cutscene, rescue across time, water and fire, Sidon and Yunolo travel back in time and save Mipha and Daru, respectively. Notice, Sidon shows up first. The title of the cutscene even has the word water first. And then it was Varuda that had problems at the end of Breath of the Wild. Fade to black. Could that be why Varuda was having problems? Perhaps right after that, Varudanya had the same issues, then Naboris and Mado followed soon after that. Each losing functionality due to the events of the Age of Calamity Happy Victorious timeline splitting and messing with the Breath of the Wild post-Calamity Age of Ruin timeline. Maybe that's the baseline for the sequel plot. The Sheikah tech has a total blackout and you run into more trouble than you expected while looking into why. Maybe the Sheikah technology has had its time to shine in the sun. The slate is nowhere to be seen in the trailer on anyone's hip where they usually keep it. Instead, we see Link's hand being infused and empowered with this metaphysical energy from the spirit hand. This could be another ancient champion like Mipha, Urbosa, Rivali, Daruk, or King Rome Bosphoramus. If so, the most solid theory I've seen is that this hand belongs to a member of the ancient Lost Zonai tribe. A group of powerful magic wielders who suddenly vanished long before the events of Age of Calamity and Breath of the Wild, and whose name literally comes from the word mystery. But one thing we know about them for sure is that they're the ones who carved out the Serpent Dragon River leading up to the Spring of Courage to pay homage to Feroche, the golden spirit dragon they prayed to, who's actually the goddess Feroar as told of in Ocarina of Time, as the goddess of courage, who created the people and creatures who would live upon Hyrule, and they lived peacefully alongside the Sheikah for a time, but they kept things more primitive. Whatever the case, that hand has some consciousness to be holding Ganon locked up like that, and to let him go to save Link and Zelda from falling when it needed to. If it does belong to a Zonai champion, perhaps its soul is tortured by the lost story of what happened to its people at Ganondorf's hands. Perhaps the sequel is the telling of that story, a dark metaphysical mystery adventure. And maybe this hand infuses its power with Link because he too represents courage, the courage to stand up to corrupted power. Hence, there's a timeless bond between the two, making it possible to learn some of this ancient magic, just like many of Link's ancestors, who embody the spirit of the hero as well. Anyway, that's just my thoughts. Leave yours in the comments. Did I miss anything interesting? I want to know. Of course, please like and share the video if you got something out of it. Subscribe if you're new and you want to stay current, and hit the bell to catch things first. It's all free, it supports the channel immensely, and you can change your mind at any time. Name a better deal than that. <laughs> Anyway, thank you so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And until next time, stay well, stay cool, and always keep punching out there. Aloha.